exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Madi. And on today's episode, I am playing a little catch up with you guys. I'm going to fill you in on uh, what's been going on in my life. Where have I been? Uh, where am I going? Uh, but really, I'm just going to have a vulnerable session where I share with you personal details, uh, some of my imperfections, uh, and give you a little bit more insight into uh, challenges and how I'm dealing with challenges. And hopefully that'll be helpful to you while you navigate dating and relationships or just uh, energy management in general. So uh, I've been MIA because uh, several reasons. Um, thinking that I was going to be the mom that could do it all. Uh, boy, oh boy, was I delusional. Um, realized very quickly that running a company, The Spicy Life, full time and uh, showing up in a soft, loving, nurturing way uh, was extremely hard when it came to pivoting. I had mastered pivoting with partnership where I'm able to leave certain things um, uh, at the office, let's say, when it comes time to create moments of intimacy or um, just you know, communication with my partner and, you know, fueling their love language and them fueling mine. When it comes to a child, I don't think that I anticipated <laughs> the necessary pivot that we required from being like very much in my left brain, um, or let's say even like masculine energy of work mode. And then also, uh, feminine right which requires like love and nurturing and then having to flip that switch um I think my husband is incredible because he's able to really do both very well me on the other hand uh I have always executed extremely strong when it comes to uh being my masculine energy and being really focused uh growing up my mother was very big on like not having distractions while you work. So I couldn't have the TV on. I couldn't listen to music. It was very much just like sit there and do your work. So throughout the years, I have trained myself to sit there and do the work and I accomplish a ton. But now as a parent, I don't get to just sit there and do the work and focus on 100% uh, my to-do list, right? Uh, my son, who has been uh, struggling with his health, has stayed home uh, more than he has gone to school. And me uh, figuring out, I think, and juggling, okay, how do I entertain and educate <laughs> a child who is homesick while at the same time make sure that I'm showing up for my clients? Something's going to suffer. And it has been uh, my podcast <laughs> uh, and social media. I feel like both have had to be put on the back burner and me really figure out, like, okay, where are my priorities? Um, which has been challenging, right? Uh, I feel like prior to being married, I thrived and had permission to be more selfish. Um, I love to have a task and watch myself like in the execution process and then like achieve the goal. Uh, if you guys follow me for a long time, you know, I'm like really huge on like strategy and um, making sure that like when you have a goal in mind, you have aligned behaviors. In the process of my son's health being compromised um, or discovering, let's say this discovery process, right? Uh, from week to week, my precious, amazing, I have the most phenomenal son in the world. Um, he just turned two. Uh, Princeton is incredible. But nobody warns me uh, for certain things that you just like don't expect or anticipate, okay? Um, him being sick within like one month this past month okay my son has had a uh, pink eye twice an ear infection and hand foot and mouth mind you that's like that's a lot right within um a month but like that's not even including the other illnesses or just rhinovirus the, the the basic like colds that he's getting and fevers that he's getting that he's picking up from other children I didn't realize, and y'all didn't tell me, that I was going to be at Kaiser so much. Uh, one, I get that they're always sick, but my son's was abnormal. When I would ask my friends or even see the other kids at daycare that were sick as well, 
it was one of those situations where I was like, okay, it's the daycare. I'm blaming them. It's not clean. The, the kids are passing these germs. And I, because I needed somewhere to place my, I think, <laughs> blame or anger with my son always being sick. But I feel like um, something clicked within me and I, I know what it was. I wound up uh, going to Dubai with my husband and I was like, I need to just like, let me just check my son out. Like I'm checking his head and I'm checking his body and I'm like, is there something that I'm not seeing? Is there something that I'm not um, noticing and why he's abnormally sick? Because even when I check with other friends, they're like, mm, yeah, our kids get sick, but yours gets way more sick than others. I looked in his mouth and I saw like these super swollen reddish uh, adenoids. I didn't know they were called adenoids at the time. Um, and, and also his tonsils. Uh, because so that's essentially what the challenge was, right? Um, his mouth was extremely red in the back and irritated. And I knew that something was wrong and I tried to show my husband and he was like, eh, I don't really know if I see anything. I think that's maybe how they look. But we wound up taking him to the ER for a completely different infection. And I asked that ER doctor to take a look. He winds up referring us to an ENT and that ENT, uh, we're like, great, we're going to have a specialist look at him. Because I, I was like, I just know in my gut, I know something is wrong. I, this is just abnormal that our kid is sick so much. So, and mind you, he is like the most pleasant sick kid ever, even though uh, he's always sick. He's still running around high energy, still extremely loving, but he can't breathe through his nose. And he snores extremely loud and he wakes up in the middle of the night. So in preparation for the ENT, I have a conversation with my husband. I'm like, okay, uh, what's your worst case scenario when we go to the doctors tomorrow? And my husband's like, worst case scenario is that the doctor tells us that it's something serious and he needs to operate in a month. My worst case scenario was that it's something serious and he needs to operate like tomorrow. My husband's like, that will never happen. Uh, I, I, he's too little to ever like get surgery. He's only two years old. We walk into the doctor's office at that appointment and my worst case scenario uh, was true. The doctor was like, I can listen to his breathing and tell that he probably has sleep apnea and it is so bad when it comes to his breathing and how loud it is that this is going to affect the quality of his sleep. This is going to affect his learning. This is going to affect um, even uh, his face is going to start to be elongated. The more that he's not like breathing through his nose, I highly recommend surgery. And of course, I'm like devastated and I'm like super, super scared because I'm like, He's not at this point. He wasn't even two yet. It was like the month before he turned two. And I was like, he's only one. He's going to get this surgery. And we were like, OK, we're going to schedule it. But then my husband and I decided that we were going to talk about it afterwards. And really like we put we put ourselves on the books. But then we were like, like, let's really research and investigate this. I wind up telling him that I'd be way more comfortable with the second opinion. We go and get the second opinion and the doctor says the same thing. I was like, okay, this is another second opinion from an ENT that's telling us the exact same thing, except for this surgeon was like, in order to comfort you, mom, I'm gonna show you. So she, he sticks a microscope through my uh, son's nose and shows me how bad his uh, tonsils were. I think that's what I was looking at, his tonsils. Um, and uh, it was his tonsils or his adenoids. I get confused which one goes where. Uh, but they were extremely inflamed and enlarged. And he was like, this is totally affecting his ability to heal properly because he has so much mucus that's not properly draining because the enlargement is almost like 90% of what it should be. So they're extremely big for his age. And it's not something he's going to grow out of. It's not something that we can give you antibiotics for. Uh, you've been taking, giving him, you know, antibiotics for other infections that he's had, and that's not helping. You've tried uh, flow and A's. You've tried Zerts. Like, we tried everything thinking maybe it's allergies, and he's like, he needs to get surgery. So uh, now there's this, like, additional stress of, <laughs> uh, you guys are going to operate on my baby, and he's going to be put under anesthesia. Boy, oh, boy. Uh, definitely called mom. And I had a conversation with her about, uh, I get it. You said I wouldn't understand until I am a parent. And I am sorry. Like, this is challenging. I don't know how you did it with three people. Because I'm struggling with one. And I think, you know, a part of it is, is still trying to maintain self. 
still trying to maintain uh, being a wife, still trying to maintain uh, a company, which I very much believe in. It's the spicy life is my purpose um, and still wanting to be this like awesome mom. And I think that cha- this was a challenging decision that like I prayed on. Lord, did I pray? Uh, and my husband had conversations with it and we decided we were going to do the surgery. And so did the surgery on Friday and, uh, Princeton is like currently recovering and I'm so proud of him. He is finally breathing, uh, through his nose and, you know, every three hours though, we have to give him like Tylenol and, uh, uh, ibuprofen. And so our sleep right now, we are sleep deprived, (laughs) uh, but I feel like it's been like that since the beginning until we had sleep trained him and then all these other like ailments that he was getting affected his sleep. But I'm super grateful, one, that we discovered it. And two, in seeing how my husband navigated it as well, seeing that I was uh, emotional and affected, right, uh, before the surgery, I have another doctor's appointment for Princeton because uh, at this point he had got the ear infection and we didn't know what was wrong with him. So like, mind you, before the surgery, there was like all these other infections that were taking place because he still hadn't been healed yet. Um, In the doctor's office, like I pride myself on pretty much being like a composed person, even though I'm extra when it comes to like negative vibrating emotions, I try to be strong. But the doctor looks at his file and she's like, oh yeah, he has a surgery coming up. Uh, this is going to be so much better for him, mom. And I like broke down in front of the doctor and started like boo-hooing and just like crying, crying, crying. I'm like, I'm so freaking scared. Like, I'm just going to say it. I I am scared out of my mind. And I had to, I I, I in that moment, I just had to take that moment (laughs) and just like let it out. Uh, of course she looks at me like, hmm, well, this is going to be really good for him. You're making a good choice. I didn't expect a hug. I didn't expect like any type of comforting. I understand like she has a job to do and um, showing up with like empathy for me in that moment uh, wasn't necessarily like top of the priority list. Uh, She wound up like checking him out. But I feel like in that moment, I was like, okay, pull it together because I need to be strong for my son. He's going to pick up on my vibration if I'm operating in fear he too will feel and sense the fear for his surgery. And I have permission, I am allowed to be scared. However, I want to make sure that he uh, is picking up on confidence, okay, over fear, because I'm making a huge decision, I want to be confident about it. So in order to feel more confident, Uh, I did more investigating and research. Oh my God, I looked at so many um, studies on this surgery and like what an adenoidectomy and a tonsillectomy, like what the repercussions are, what the side effects. Um, (laughs) The hospital is like extremely tired of me guys because I called them multiple times. But what I witnessed in this process was my husband being extremely strong for me and allowing these moments of like weakness where I do get to cry in front of him. I do get to, you know, uh, let him know my fears. And what I really appreciated was him telling me that he was afraid too and not pretending to be strong. He actually was strong and is strong. But I feel like um, in those moments where he saw I was weak, he knew, okay, she needs assurance. She also needs to know that I understand what she's going through and needs me to be vulnerable and I really appreciated his vulnerability through this time so that it's not just me who's freaking out that he's also like scared as hell but the way that he's demonstrating it and the way that he's showing it isn't with tears um the way that he's showing it is just in his communication with me and expressing it and meanwhile mine is showing up physically uh I appreciated that verbally he allowed himself and felt safe enough with me to also tell me the 10 reasons why he's afraid and that he hopes that we're making the right decision. Um, He prayed over us before we went into the surgery and uh, was holding my hand the entire time. We had to spend the night at the hospital. And when I tell you the most adorable thing, and I am probably going to post this, the most adorable thing was seeing my husband crunched up beside my son. 
and it's this like small little bed after the surgery that um also sorry guys he the surgery went well they said like uh Princeton didn't even cry <laughs> um when they like took him from us to go operate but then also when he woke up he was still under anesthesia but the surgeon was saying like uh usually like children you know cry when they're um separated from their parents or you know in the process of like uh, us trying to wake them up and he was like super calm and chill I'm like this is if this ain't the strongest little boy ever but um seeing my husband crunched up in like this small little bed with him laying beside him and us taking shifts as we spent the night in the hospital to administer uh his medicine and make sure that he was comfortable as the nurses also gave like additional medicine that he needed um uh, it made me really just have this appreciation for this incredible person who I married and when we speak about high value men and we look at it from their tax bracket I really in that moment thought to myself this is what a high value man is this this is what a high value man looks like a high value man looks like the person who is prideful let me not say my husband has some pride okay uh but who will take down that wall when it's necessary, who will step out of ego, who will soften and who will show up for his family in a way when they need strength and when they need softness. And I really appreciated uh, how he showed up for us during this time because he understands that like my son needs this incredible comforting. I need this incredible comforting, but he needed comforting too. And so by him telling me that he needed that also, it gave me an opportunity, you know, to give that to him. I also realized, cause I'm gonna toot my own horn, that my husband wasn't always like this. And I think that we go into relationships and dating with the expectation that a person's just gonna show up with this incredible level of emotional intelligence or this person's going to show up extremely compassionate and empathetic and those are qualities that are extremely ad admirable but I also think that I play a huge role in my husband's ability to be able to pivot back and forth between his masculine energy and his feminine energy because I've worked so hard on myself to be able to pivot between mine that me giving myself permission to be vulnerable and show him my weaknesses, but him also being privy to my strengths, the vulnerability that I have given to him gives him then permission to be vulnerable to me. And I like to say that I am responsible for these moments or uh, the relationship that we have nurtured through uh, our dating and our marriage where he feels safe enough to uh take that armor off and tell me his fears tell me his concerns and even not even he will tell me also too, like give me some comfort in this moment <laughs> uh he is not afraid to ask for what he needs and I think that uh while he's a very direct person I think on the emotional end he does not show up that way publicly but it's one of the things that I've grown to love about him is that like I do get that at home and I do get that in our relationship and marriage. And it's a beautiful thing to watch when you see a man who is extremely like strong on the exterior and mentally strong be in these moments of softness and tenderness with not only the child who you love, but also with you. And I appreciate allowing myself to do the healing work, allowing myself to um, really master masculine and feminine energy and how it shows up so that I could help guide my husband when it comes to sitting in his feminine energy, which is, is essentially what, uh, what, what happens um, when you not only demonstrate that, but I have worked very hard to pull it out of him because he didn't just volunteer it, right? I didn't just show up with my feminine energy and he's like, oh, I will just match your energy. Uh, I've had to work very hard to pull it out of him. And so I just want to let you guys know that there is a plethora of men who will probably go through this process with you the more that you master the pivot, um, which I do teach in my class, uh, this, your purpose made awaits. <laughs> Uh, once again, I take you through self, passion, intimacy, communication, and learning to say yes. 
within there, uh, I do work with you on masculine and feminine energy and how to uh, guide the male psyche and his emotions to uh, a more tender place, but also how to recognize someone who is capable of being guided. And I think that's where we make the mistake is we think that we may see potential, but there isn't aligns behaviors to support the belief that we want to have about someone. And so in order for you to become better at uh, picking a partner or uh, recognizing when you do have a mate that's in front of you, let me help you and sign up for your purpose mate awaits. Uh, this is my uh, class and curriculum that I teach that we are in a community and group of women who it's a safe space for you. I'm giving you tools, answering relationship questions and giving advice and helping you really master uh, how to manifest your purpose mate. I say all this to say that I am totally with my purpose mate. In sharing with you what's going on with my son, I'm now going to pivot <laughs> to uh, some challenges that I have been dealing with. Uh, and I'm just I'm just gonna admit to you what's going on um, in my relationship. Uh, so today I was gonna actually have my husband come on and talk about the book that he's coming out with. Yes, my husband wrote a book. It's called Marriage and Finances, okay? Uh, him and I both um, are extremely like driven people. And I think why I wanna share this is because I had this aha moment of like, this is what I prayed for. I need to be not only grateful or operating in gratitude is how I manage it, but it also helps me with me understanding when I get no's from him. And what I mean by that is he was supposed to be on today's episode. So we were going to talk about his book. He's overwhelmed with work and also managing my son who's in recovery mode. And it's just played into like him being tired. And in moments where I really wanted to push and force him to come on and do an episode with me, because I also have in my mind that like, Yes, I want that brilliant man who creates security for the family and who is in a leadership role at his job. I also want the person who uh, can give me attention 24-7 and create content when I need it. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Something has to give. And my husband is like, we, I don't got time to create content with you. Uh, sorry, but can't come on this episode. That's not my priority. And I was in my feels for a second and I had to stop and say like, dang, this is what I asked for though. I wanted the person who created security for me so that I could be in my creative element in running my business and in him helping me facilitate and run my business, he still has another company that he is responsible to. And so I really had to be like understanding in that moment when he originally told me, yes, he was going to do the episode with me so we could talk about his book. And then... The other part is like, remember, this is what I prayed for. This is what I asked for. I asked for this kind of a partnership. And even one of the exercises that I have in my curriculum uh, speaks to your way of being. And oftentimes we will ask for something that we want, right? And even in what we need, we have to really look for not just what we're seeking and why we're seeking it but also if we achieve that thing if we get this quality in this partner what is our way of being in order to be compatible with that partner and so if you are someone who was like well I want an extremely determined driven like hard-working person who's a you know a provider and a protector okay well what is your way of being in order to be compatible with that kind of person there's going to be moments where you're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to be understanding because the thing that you're asking for also doesn't necessarily look like you mirroring that behavior in order for it to be compatible. Sometimes it looks like you having to be uh, understanding, considerate, uh, uh, compassionate, um, uh, flexible, like in order to be a, a great match for the quality is the quality that you are asking for. Are you in a position that when tested, <laughs> you can actually be in the energy that will serve the moment or that relationship or that experience? And so in me being understanding, I was like, Wusa, I'm going to do the episode by myself, but I'm not going to highlight 
the key points about the book. What I'm going to do is talk to you about how we got to the book and my journey as a partner through it. Okay, so some of y'all may not admit to this, but I will admit that in being with a driven person and also being extremely driven, I have been struggling with uh, feeling like I'm not doing enough, like I'm not working hard enough, and also feeling like uh, there's not enough time in the day. And in, in hearing me say these things out loud, because I've had multiple conversations um, about these like challenges that I'm working through, I came to the realization that there was a potential chance that I was jealous of my partner. And this is a motion that I recognize and I actually speak about in my own freaking book uh, about how to handle jealousy. OK, so first I'm going to tell you like why I was jealous and then I'm going to tell you <laughs> how I use my own philosophy in order to uh, manage that emotion. So I think that as a mom. We have to do a lot. We have to uh, not only make sure that we're like providing for our family um because we want to contribute right whether you're in a relationship or a single parent you gotta you gotta provide um but we also want to make sure that we are uh being a good example providing a uh, high level emotional intelligence educating nurturing showing up with love making sure that their needs are met uh teaching them discipline i think there's like all these different things that i've been learning along the way that are really required in order to like build a human <laughs> a good human at that okay um not to, you know also got to teach spirituality and like there's and mind you I'm dealing with a, a very young child so his level of understanding is still something that's pushing also even my patients and me having to try this different approach uh of I don't know if I would call it gentle parenting because I feel like that's the rhetoric that's being used right now um but I am not physically disciplining him the way that my mom disciplines me okay my mom um definitely was good for believing in spankings and my partner and I decided that we weren't going to hit Princeton and so I find myself at times being like whoo okay <laughs> what's another way that I can uh release this emotion and my girlfriend gave me uh the uh I feel like it was like a great like little tidbit of advice of like, okay, in those moments when you want to be physical with him, do something else that uh, is pleasurable, but still releases, right, that need for punishment, because my natural reaction is like, well, I just, I should just throw him the way that I was thrown. And uh, I can't do that. I'm, I'm taking a different approach in parenting. So what she told me to do, uh, shout out to Roxanne, was to tickle. And tickling has helped. This boy has been tickled so many freaking times because it lets me release the physicalness of uh, like touch and letting out like my aggression, <laughs> um, even though I'm doing it like in a playful way and I'm making sure that I smile when I do it. Um, it stops him, it distracts him from the thing that he's doing. I get the physical release, but he also stops doing the behavior that I don't want him to do. And then he knows, okay, if I do this thing, I'm gonna get tickled to death. And so, uh, that has helped me in managing some of like the frustration when it comes to uh, the rearing part. But uh, like I said, go back to the requirements of mothering. Um, I'm now deal with the pressure of like one, wanting to have this amazing relationship with my son and wanting him and even though parents say that you shouldn't want your child to like you I don't care I want my kid to like me I want to have a good relationship with them and I want to uh, carry on the role of friendship and parent and I do believe that you can have both while I have heard people say my mom has said you can't be friends with your kids uh, I think Michelle Obama said you can't be friends with your kids I am of the notion that you can have boundaries you can have discipline you can uh, create respect in an environment where uh the goal may not necessarily be for me to be liked 24 seven, but there will be a relationship where we both admire each other and we both are fond of each other. We are not going to have disdain for each other. And I'm speaking that into existence, right? Uh, boy, oh boy, I'm sure I will learn. But the, the approach that I am taking is uh, that I want to foster friendship. So with that, I'm now taking on this 
uh, what will his perception of me be as I execute parenting? And then two, what's my perception of my, uh, that my husband has of me now in this role of mothering? Before, I only cared how he saw me as a wife and knowing that I have mother potential, but now him actually being a witness to how I execute motherhood is an additional thing that I didn't even like anticipate that I would care about. And so I appreciate something. Let me circle back to Michelle. I appreciate what Michelle Obama said <laughs> um, that when you become parents, it's this new area of like uh, criticism or judgment on how hard your partner works that wasn't there before. And I wholeheartedly agree with that because in witnessing how I show up for my son and how my husband shows up for our son, he has a boatload of responsibilities that he's doing and so am I. But we're also watching each other carry out our own to-do lists and also the to-do lists that we gave each other. Where before we were able to act independently, now we're in this place of, okay, did you do the things that I asked you to do? And did you do them for our child like I asked you to do them? And so in acknowledging that I have a tendency to do this, to... uh debate with him on like who did more that day or who's more tired um I started to have a little resentment and let me tell you why because I started to tell myself I do way more than him and I'm not gonna lie when it comes to the baby I do and he agreed he actually agreed with me I had a conversation with him about it and he's like yeah you do you, you do do more and he's like but I show up in other ways in the household that you cannot. So in you showing up more for the for our son, um, and what he means by that is like uh, it may be from like taking care of him, like from a hygiene standpoint to uh, making sure that he's learning his ABCs in English and Spanish today. Uh, in me doing that, he has things around the house that he that I can't do, right? That was like one of the things that he said. He was like, those drawers that you want, like childproof lock that just broke, and I'm going to be the one who's going to drill them. You're not. So while you are watching him, I have to go do this task at hand. He was like, you're not going to fix the roof. You're not going to do the gardening. You're not going to. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I get it. You're right. And so one that helped release some of the um, uh area where I felt like I'm showing up more in like the parental role even though he's the most phenomenal husband ever I was looking at it from like a task at hand like what I actually like witnessed those touch points being and he's looking at it which I really appreciate and how he drew me to looking at it which is like coming from a place of like uh, teamwork and okay you carry this load so I can carry this load right and this is what like great partnership should look like but let me tell you about the resentment part <laughs> My husband decides at the same time uh, that we have a conversation about me focusing on um, me completing the book. Let me start with, there's a huge calling on my heart to complete this book. I've had dreams about it. My mother has told me in the dream, finish this book. And I promised myself that it would be done because I know that the world needs it and it's a part of uh, the spicy life uh, message being spread, okay? But what I didn't anticipate was uh, the juggling aspect of trying to manage it all and how no matter how hard I try to schedule or anticipate what my day should look like, it gets extremely thrown off and disrupted <laughs> because when you become a parent, there's just so many things that you maybe don't anticipate for. So it doesn't matter how organized I try to be. There's these like little things that come up that I'm like, crap, okay, I was trying to be organized and I already, I'm challenged with time management. But in addition to that, now I'm freaking exhausted, okay? So in trying to show up for my, you know, clients and trying to show up for my husband and trying to show up for my son. And then also not to mention like, I have a million friends, like really great friendships that I also have to nurture and be there for them as well. So unfortunately, those friendships have taken a little bit of a back burner, but they are very understanding. And then my family wants my time and attention too, right? Like my mom, my siblings. So uh, just being pulled in different directions and also still needing a social life. Like mama needs to go out. Not to mention that I still need to look good. 
So I still got to work out. I still have to uh, uh, make sure that I stay fine, not just for my partner, but for myself, because I still like attention. OK. And so there's all these things that I'm trying to manage within a day. And then nine o'clock hits I have on my calendar that I need to write my book and I'm exhausted. It doesn't happen. Instead, I decide I'm going to watch TV and <laughs> just veg out. With everything that I told you about uh, what's going on with my son's health, in addition to partnership, um, I have been emotionally eating. So I, I will get back on track with health. However, uh, I realize like why I'm doing it, okay? Um, if you haven't uh, watched any of my episodes about relationship with food, I think that those are like some great episodes for you to go back to. Uh, but back to my husband. So we both have visions for the spicy life. He decides that it is time for his book to come out. I've been saying my book is going to come out for three years now. This fool writes a book in three months. Okay. And during the three month process, I am taking over some of the things that he would be doing with our son. And so a lot goes on my plate as far as having to show up so that our son isn't distracting him and that he can just like close the door, lock himself away and write, write, write. OK, this person is staying up until 6 a.m. writing this freaking book and finishes it within three months. And I'm like, why am I not more proud of him? I'm a little resentful because I have to overcompensate for the time with our son and still run my empire. But where, what is this emotion that I'm feeling? Well, the emotion was jealousy, okay? And I had to call it what it was. And what I was doing was comparing myself to my husband and how long it took him. And this is to my point earlier is that like, if your partner, I'm gonna just say men, okay? I'm just gonna say men. If a man locks himself in <laughs> his office for three months to write a book, uh, it is seen as an act of uh, determination, brilliance, discipline. If a mom locks herself in a room for three months and puts all the responsibility, I think, um, on uh, her husband, I'm deemed neglectful, selfish, and, uh, and not maybe taking responsibility for what I signed up for. Okay. I'm just, there's, I feel like, uh, when women decide to be selfish or when they decide to, um, not show up in a way that's like giddy pleasant and also, uh, putting everybody's needs before their own, we are demonized when men do it. Oh my God, they are celebrated and they are so disciplined and headstrong. Okay. So remember how I started this episode telling you this is what I prayed for. I asked for a very determined man. This is how I had to show up for a very determined man. I had to show up in a way that was still cheerleading and applauding him writing this book, taking over the responsibilities that were needed for our son, uh, from taking him to school, picking him up, to also like putting him down for bed. Like all that is like a process in addition to making sure once again that I show up for my clients. And... The resentment wasn't necessarily coming, which I thought was coming from the responsibility. The resentment was coming from my husband doing something that I've been saying that I was going to do for a very long time and realizing that he was highlighting through his accomplishment my inadequacies. And that was like a hard freaking pill for me to swallow that it wasn't about the time. And it was I, it was like, oh, my God, he's doing something that I've been wanting to do. And he knocked it out the park. And I have all these reasons. My mom calls them reasons, not excuses. I have all these reasons of why I haven't done it. And she's like, give yourself grace, give yourself grace. And I'm like, I don't got time for grace. I need to get this out there in the world. But what I had to take a look at was like. How am I showing up for him, even though I know I'm experiencing jealousy in this moment? And then what am I going to do about this jealousy? So I can't be in this. I can't live in this world where I'm jealous of a partner who is successful and determined and accomplished because this is what I prayed for. And jealousy is a very uh, awful emotion for you to sit in that vibration of. And I know this. So I had to go to one of the chapters in my spicy life book. And look at social comparison, okay? I had to look at how I was comparing myself to my mate and understand that not only do we have uh, callings that are meant 
to support one another, maybe there's something that I can learn from this and that will help with the jealousy. What am I supposed to be paying attention to? What am I supposed to be experiencing? And what's the higher vibrating thought to get me there? And so in him being so determined, in him uh, taking time for himself, in him uh, doing what he said he was going to do, he set a, a goal date and he actually like stuck to it. And then had the audacity to be like, you know, you should set a goal date for your book. And I'm like, I can't stick to it, sir, because you're writing your book and I need to show up for you in this time. Um, but what I had to do was ask for freaking help. OK, so that's my spicy tip right there. I had to ask for help. I call my mom crying and I'm like, why do I feel this emotion? Why am I experiencing jealousy? I know what I should be doing and I haven't been able to do it. And she calmed me down. And at the grown ass ripe age of 40, I uh, had to ask my mama for help. And mom came that week took care of Princeton while I checked into a hotel room at the Soho and wrote my book. So my husband was on board with it. He was like, sure, take all the time you need. Uh, but I took a week off from the world and wrote, 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 okay? One, I appreciated my mom coming through. Two, I appreciated my husband understanding and me saying like, hey, I'm gonna be selfish, I'm gonna do this thing. But what I had to do and put into motion was okay, how am I going to execute this thing? How am I going to make it happen? Because if I just sit in jealousy and I don't do anything about it and I admire this accomplishment that he did, it's not going to be able to come from a uh, place of peace because I know I still have it on my heart to do this thing. So I need to do something about it. I need to do aligns behaviors for the goal that I have so that one, I'm not angry with myself because I'm not really not angry with my husband. He did like an amazing thing. I'm angry with myself. I'm upset with myself. And at the end of the day, while I may not have the energy to pull on nighters anymore, like I used to and stay up till 6 a.m. working on a project, if I need to take time for myself and ask my community, my friends to help me, my family to help me, I got to do that. And I think that when you are a strong woman, we sometimes one forget that <laughs> we can't do it all but also who wants to live like that who wants to not be able to lean on people and who wants to take all of that on and I think that's what I was trying to do I was trying to take it all on and baby girl called mama crying so one shout out to spicy mama because I really appreciate you coming through two I want to circle back to this um part about inadequacy and jealousy and then I'm going to tie it up okay uh my partner is doing something phenomenal. In him writing a book about marriage and finances, he is going to be putting out a product in the world that is going to help people, whether you are in the marriage or premarital, in how to um, really get uh, communication in order when it comes to your finances, okay? Financial intimacy is one of the hardest things to tackle when it comes to relationship, and it makes us extremely uncomfortable. And he's guiding you through there and how to have these conversations and how to make spreadsheets, where to save, where to invest, and um, how to navigate uh, your finances with your partner. So what he's putting out there in the world needs to be celebrated. I need to be his biggest cheerleader. And in comparing myself to him and what I hadn't yet done, I wasn't able to show up in my best of light and I needed to adjust my attitude and my mindset in order to do that. And so once again, I circle back to this is what I prayed for. This is what I asked for. I wanted this very determined man, but I had to be in a position where uh, I took a step back and one acknowledged with an awareness of what I, of the emotion that I was experiencing Two make a decision. I can either stay in this emotion and let it affect me and maybe even cause problems in my marriage or three, start to do things that will raise my vibration and make me feel proud of myself. And it's not that I couldn't be proud of him. It was that in me not being proud of myself, I wasn't able to show up demonstrating the behaviors of someone proud, but also the emotions and sentiment. So uh, going through one, giving myself permission to be selfish and two, um, doing things that were supportive of a goal that I've been saying 
uh, has really been extremely helpful in. I can't believe I was jealous of him. Like I'm still, <laughs> I'm still in this. But but instead of me using it as an emotion of jealousy that hurt the relationship, instead he inspired me. Okay. Uh, because there, it was not this area of competition. It wasn't that I was trying to beat him or um, it wasn't that I was trying to outrank him in the role. He is the leader of our family. But I feel like he did lead because what did he do? And him executing his book, it put fire under my ass. So instead of me crying a river and saying, what was me and not doing anything about it? I was like, oh, I need to get my shit together and start to execute. And that's exactly what it did. I looked at it from a place of like fuel and motivation. I asked for help and uh, was honest about what I was feeling with uh, my loved ones. And then also asked for permission to be selfish and let people know what was going on and that I was going to isolate. And then really took time and just focused on myself. I shut all the doors, all the windows, no TV, no media, no nothing. And I just like work, work, worked. And that's what I really needed. But I just want to make uh, the spicy tips to you very clear that the, the awareness has to be there. You have to recognize it. You have to ask how you can show up better in those situations. And then you actually have to execute and apply the things that you are saying that you want in order to achieve what it is that you are striving for. So I'm honest and I'm being vulnerable with you about these negative <laughs> emotions because I'm a real freaking human. And although uh, I am a relationship expert, I still have human experiences. And it's not even about like, okay, uh, as a relationship expert, you can't make mistakes. You can't have these emotions. They don't serve the relationship. I, 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 I have the information and I have the knowledge. How I use it and how I overcome is what makes me the expert. The actual application, the actual I know I should be doing better, therefore I'm gonna force myself to do better is actually what contributes to the expertise because a lot of people can read 100 books, they can know and even uh, maybe even have some awareness of what they're feeling, but it's in the execution and being able to do it for yourself that I feel like makes and, and really facilitates you being an expert at what you do. And so the application has to be there. And I freaking applied and I'm super proud of myself. But also uh, in the acknowledgement, I understand also too in this experience, like what other people feel and go through in their relationship. So as a counsel couples, I'm also able to say, I've been there. I've been there. Let me tell you how to solve for it. Because not only did uh, I read the the case study on it or the theory behind it, I've also applied it in my own personal life. And this is how we're going to execute this. These are the strategies that I came up with in order to do it for myself, in order to do it for hundreds of others. And this is how we're going to do it for you. So uh, in being a real life human, um, I give major props up to uh, God because he has helped me through this situation, my mama, my friends and family, um, and also my incredible husband who is going to be on an episode uh, probably in a few weeks to talk about marriage and finances. And I want you guys to support his book, sign up on The Spicy Life uh, so that you can start like finding out more information about it, uh, purchases, Please, please support marriage and finances. It's also a great tool for you to use if you're trying to manifest love, whether you have a partner or not. You want to read this book so you're already in alignment when he shows up for you or when she shows up for you. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life.